All right. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTube. This is Rosh, and this is a new tutorial series I'm putting together called FM3 Basics. Uh, this series is going to be about how to program the Fractal Audio FM3. So feel free to view the website fm3basics.com. And this is going to also work in conjunction with my previous video series called Axe Effects Basics. So feel free to view them on this uh, on my YouTube channel as well as axeffectsbasics.com. So a lot of the preset building approaches in that previous series can definitely be used for the FM3. The tones should be uh, very, very close, if not the same. Uh, a lot of these tutorials in the early part of this series is going to cover how to uh, basically program a lot of the buttons, especially since the real estate is going to be so small. Uh, since there's only three buttons on the FM3, there's a lot of different approaches on how to maximize that as well as using you know, external controllers or uh, anything like that. So uh, if you have any questions, by all means, feel free to submit them in the comments. So a little about me, my name is Rosh, once again, and I am a guitar player and guitar tech out here in the Los Angeles area. I build and program guitar rigs for a lot of different clients. So my clients include Def Leppard, Steve Vai, um, Bush, Dweezil Zappa, Melissa Etheridge, and many more. So uh, I wanted to give back to the Fractal community and put together some approaches for everybody that is using the FM3 as we come out of the pandemic. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to be getting back on stage soon, so I hope you find some value in these tutorials. So let's talk about how to assign some basic effects uh, to your foot controller in the uh, FM3. So here is a factory preset, and by default, the factory preset or the factory layouts are going to be using the preset, the scenes, effects, and so on. This can be a little bit confusing for a lot of people. So um, let's talk about how to basically build your first basic set of uh, buttons right here. Let's assign some effects onto them. So we'll just call this Rosh Basic. It's right here in the FC controller menu. So right now, by default, these are the presets that you would build. and um, for example, you know, these would be in this particular bank, these presets are empty. This would be the high power bank. And if we go further up in other presets or in other banks, you can see that these are going to be different presets that we can click on and do all that kind of stuff. But let's just sign a basic effect first. So what we'll, what we'll do is we'll actually clear this, uh, by hitting reset. And then we want to also hit reset here. Let's just clear all these out. And then the other approach, of course, is you can always right click and then reset as well for any of the switches. So if you make a mistake and you want to reset that switch, you can just right click, hit reset switch, and you're good. All right. So uh, each foot switch on the FM3 or any of the fractal controllers can be assigned to pretty much any function as well as any color. So the first function that we're going to actually utilize is the effect. So in this preset, we have a factory preset. We have a bunch of different effects. So what we would want to do is have access to those effects to turn them on or off. So in this case, let's turn on the drive effect right here. So what you would do is click here. And then each button has a tap function and a hold function. So if you just press the button, you would uh, turn on or activate whatever this function would be. If you hold the button, it would also have a secondary function as well. So let's take the effect. And then the next function, the next line right here is called function. And what do we want to do with the effect? Do we want to select or toggle between the channels, increase the channels, etc.? For now, we're going to leave it as bypass. So every time we press that button, it'll either turn the effect on or off. And then lastly, we want to pick the effect. So in our case, we wanted to turn on the drive. So in this foot controller right here, we want to select effect, and then we're going to turn on drive one, which is this. Okay. So really simple. We basically assign this button to the FM3 to turn on the drive effect. And so if I press the FM3 drive right now, you'll see that the drive pedal turns on, drive pedal turns off. And then when it's turned on, the um, light on the FM3 is illuminated. And then when it's bypassed, it is dim. So as you can see, it's turning on and off. 
Now, let's say we wanted to assign a phaser to the next switch. We would click that, pick the effect, and again, we want to bypass the effect, and we want to pick the phaser. Now, the cool thing about this is right now, these the colors of these effects are blue, which is the default, but you can, of course, assign them to any color of your choosing. All this and it will be reflected on the FM3. I'm going to use the default settings for now. So this light blue color is for the effect, um, generally used for effect bypass. Okay. And last but not least, let's assign uh, the flanger to that. And we pick effect. Again, we want the bypass. And then we want the flanger. Okay, so as you can see, if I press the drive, drive pedal turns on, drive pedal turns back off. And if we press the phaser, phaser turns on, phaser turns off. And last but not least, the flanger on and off. So that is assigning an effect bypass to the tap function. Now, each button on the FM3 also has a hold function that we can assign a different uh, function to when you hold down the button. This can be really useful, especially since the drive pedals, for example, have multiple channels. So in the case of this factory preset, the A channel right here is for this tube screamer. And if we wanted a, a different type of drive pedal, in this case, this esoteric RCB, we could actually toggle between these two channels using the hold function. So this would definitely be a lot better than adding a second drive block, because as you can see, we're starting to approach the CPU limit. Now, if you never need both drive pedals on, what you would, uh, my recommendation always is to switch the channels or toggle the channels on this particular drive block. So when we use the hold function, if you hold down this button, it will assign or do something else. You can assign it to be anything. In this case, we're gonna also have it do something with the effect. And this time, what we're going to do is we're going to toggle between two channels on the drive block. Okay, So I'm going to reset this really quick and just kind of walk you through this. So first off, we want to toggle between channel A and channel B on this. So we would first pick Effect, and then we would pick Toggle. And then last but not least, we would pick the effect that we want to toggle between. Right now it says amp. We want to toggle between the drive one. So now you'll see this little bracket going around and then we have to pick the two channels it's going to toggle between. In our case, it's going to be channel A and channel B. So we'll do channel B right here. So if I, the way this functionality is set up is that if I tap on the pedal, it'll engage this or bypass this drive block. So I'll just engage it and I'll bypass it again. Now the hold function that we assigned here is going to toggle between the two channels. So it's like having a dual channel overdrive pedal. So if I hold this button down, it's gonna go to channel B now, okay? And if I hold this button down again, it's gonna return back to channel A. And you notice that the block didn't actually turn on. So you could basically decide which overdrive you need before you engage it. And so what I'm doing is, again, I'm holding down the button with my foot to switch between these two channels. And then if I tap it, it'll engage that block or bypass it. And so you get the option of having two different overdrives. Of course, you could always use uh, another feature, which we'll cover in a later video, but I just wanted to kind of demonstrate some real basic stuff about toggling between two channels on the drive. You can do this for any effect. So for example, if you, in your phaser, you have the classic vibe, and then in the B channel, let's say that's a block 90, so that's based off the MXR phase 90. And if you want to toggle between both these channels by holding down this foot switch, you would again, select effect, you would select bypass, and you would change it to toggle. And then you wanna select which effect you wanna to toggle, which would be the phaser. And then last but not least, you wanna 
pick which two channels it's going to toggle between. In our case, channel A and channel B. So you can see here, I'll hold down the foot switch, and it's now picking channel B. If I hold down the foot switch again, it's picking channel A, and it's not engaging the phaser yet unless I tap it. When I tap it, it bypasses it. If I hold down the button, it switches between the two channels there. So last but not least, we can also do the same thing with the flanger. We would do effect, channel toggle, pick the flanger, and go to channel B. So in our case, the flanger would go from an analog stereo flanger to, uh, we'll pick a, I don't know, zero flanger. Okay. So if I tap the pedal, turns it on and off. If I hold the button down, it's going to switch between the two channels. And again, it's still bypassed unless I want it on by tapping. All right, so that's going to cover it for our first video here in the FM3 Basics. If you have any tutorials that you would like me to cover, by all means, feel free to leave a comment below. I'm going to be adding many more of these to get the maximum mileage you can out of the FM3. The three buttons may seem limiting to some, but it's actually very useful, and we're going to go over a lot of different approaches on how to do that. All right, so other than that, uh, please comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.